which is uh, about uh, the time frame. And uh, on this point, I want also to propose an amendment. But before coming to that, I want to I want all the members to go to the page, page eight of this report of our of the purpose committee. Uh, starting from the third line of this, this page, third line. That they say, with regard to a given time frame, the committee was informed that since the audit accounts of the committee were expected to be contained in the annual report, the ideal time frame of for February is at least a six months after the financial analysis. When you say at least a six months, it means even two years after the end of financial year, it means to assume that time frame. <laughs> Here is unlimited time So I want to propose an amendment. As one of the speaker, I want to propose an amendment in this way. As you know, the audit account report, which is prepared by the audit commission, is prepared within six months after the end of financial. So this report uh part of which must be also included in this uh, annual report because it is and your report of activities with the audit account report. So I propose an amendment this way that uh, this uh, East African community and your report of activities must be tabled before the house within seven months. I add another month because uh, it will help to include also the the findings of uh, audited account report. Uh, as a member speaker, concluding the uh, words that we are going to adopt, I report the South African community and all reports which does not have relevant facts, figures, and the statistics, which uh, also I report this is not following a uh, strategic plan of our ANC, which is not uh, referring to uh some directives and uh, council uh, directives uh, but uh, i believe and i trust uh, the council of ministers that for, ne for the next time uh the other report will be referring to these tools in order to help us to evaluate where we are to evaluate ourselves where or where we are with regard to where we are coming from and where we are living that's only the speaker I just submit and uh, support this report with that amendment. Thank you, Honorable Court. You will remember to put your proposed amendment in writing. Honorable Nama. Uh, thank you, Reverend Honorable Speaker. From the honest Reverend Honorable Speaker, I want to say that I'm a member of the General Purpose Committee. But uh, more importantly, I must say that I was, I was disarmed from using my vigor and analytical skills when I was handling this report as a member. Because I'm not used to dealing with post-mortem, let alone post-mortem, but obsolete post-mortem. But you say the report of the past activity is a post-mortem. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm speaking. But this one, is, this one is, 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 is much, much more different because we're talking about 2014, 2015. Right now, Speaker, I want to join my colleagues in a need saying that, uh, as we put in the report, that from the onset, this report is lacking not only in the form, but also in substance, 100%. And we discussed that in our committee, and indeed, it is well anchored in our report. Because when you are looking at the progress of, if you are looking at the progress of the community, you cannot talk about a report, any report, of the community without showing where we are coming from and where we are going. It was not showing where we have reached in terms of our four pillars of integration in that year. Zero, nothing. It was lacking in terms of figures and statistics. And indeed, there was nothing to show the progress even of the institutions of this community. That's why my energy, when I was debating it, was extremely negative because I could not comprehend that the whole community of ESC 
with a very powerful battalion could come up with such kind of a shallow report to say the least. So, uh, right from the speaker, I want to address uh, my disappointment, just like how the committee members of general purpose rejected your disappointment, and we are only a little bit consoled by what the president is going to say, that now they have pulled up their stocking to the Kajun in that round. And now the report from 2015, 2016, that they are ready, and others will be after the request that it is possible to integrate all of them together. As we stop this idea of dealing with the post mortem, that's not a speaker. We should be able to deal with substantive issues that are happening that time. We cannot be a community that is always dealing with the past. We have been struggling very hard in the accounts committee to deal with the same. But under your able leadership, you have been able to bring them to speak. And of course, under the able leadership and membership of the accounts committee, we have put them at task to ensure that these reports are ready on time. So I want to appeal that please, we do not expect in the next report to find a report that is completely shallow and empty and vague in terms of not only form, but also substance. I beg you, Mr. Thank you. I rise to really to appreciate the work that was done by the Young Purpose Committee by reviewing the, the report of 2014-2015. I uh, appreciate what they have done. Uh, I agree with them that the report will not uh, satisfy uh, the standard that we will require of it in terms of format, uh, in terms of uh, real presentation, uh, quality and quality, and I'll also I appreciate the engagement that the, the committee made with the council and ministers, uh, who promised that the next report for 2016 and 17 uh, and 2015-16 uh, will be in better form. Uh, that that also is, is good. Now, my emphasis would be on the observation that was made by the committee. The, uh, that is. Uh, observation number four, that not relevant reference was made to EAC policy document, like the EAC development strategy of the, of the period. Uh, if we can remind ourselves when we were in Nairobi, the share of the council uh, questioned us that next time when we are making budgeting, the budgeting should be, should really be anchor on the on the pillars of the East Africa uh, strategic plan, the four pillars. And that if the report is made on those basis, we can be really be able to understand how the organization is progressing. So I am emphasizing this observation and I would be recommending that let's make a report uh, really based on the available development strategy. Like for instance, we have now the development strategy for 2016, 2017, to 2020, to 2021. So I, this, I'm emphasizing this, and I'm recommending that uh, we got to adopt uh, that observation as a recommendation so that anybody reading any report from the interfederal community can be able to understand it on the basis of the pillars that have been set. So I rest my case, uh, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. I thank you very much, the Honorable Alak. If you can switch your microphone off. And then I have already appointed the Honorable Jamatia. Have you given up to speak? I had already mentioned you in the previous order. Then the Honorable Mary will follow Honorable Karondo and the Honorable Odongo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the report of my committee that is very focused, and also to thank all of us in part and uh, presented uh, this uh, report before you today. Mr. Speaker, 
Africa. But one question that comes to my mind is, how come these beings were very sick and work from What we do that we should be doing to ensure that even other beings that we are like are also quickly up to them and our family members accept them, sign, and they become lost. So we will turn over to the community. We talk about a uh, lack of capacity or not feeling we have to do it. It is something we need to have. Maybe some of the work that we have, our leaders are not in agreement, or our member states are not in agreement. Could it be important that we first do our homework, we bring them on board before we must be blind? rather than wasting our very vital time putting in place bills that will not be attended for two for years. Number two, Mr. Speaker, is the commissioning of the East African Territory and Conference System. The system has enabled fast and efficient communication among member states and also between the EFC headquarters and the member states. This has not only saved time, but it has also saved money. And many times as leaders, we have complained about the amount of money that is spent on conferences, workshops, conferences. And I realized that within that year, and that some time back, 10% of the finances was 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 saved. I believe that by now, now that the system has matured even more, we should be saving more money. I commend that achievement during that financial year. I'm happy that it is being used, and indeed, that's how the world is going. There's no need. Some countries actually are no longer necessarily having staff members come into office and to work. They can work anywhere they are. Whatever they do, indeed they communicate the way we have done it now. So, congratulations to the East African community. And indeed, I would like to congratulate and thank Trademark East Africa for the support that was given. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, yesterday I did not have a chance to say my condolences to our Tanzanian colleagues. Indeed, it was tragic. And I also must mention that the deaths that were registered in Lake Victoria were not only uh, Tanzanians, by the way, these were East Africans. There were other nationalities as well. But what struck me during the reading the report was that during that financial year, the Commission strengthened its coordination and management capacity, including among many other management and coordination capacity building areas was the sector of navigation and security in Lake Victoria. And yet we can still see that hundreds of people of East Africans can die out of negligence, out of carelessness, when actually measures were already put in place to safeguard uh, our people when they are using the waters of Lake Victoria. All in all, Mr. Speaker, this report indeed could uh, improve in substance, in volume, in detail, and in time, but all the same, a lot is being done. You get an impression that a lot is being done and there's a number of significant achievements, but also that a lot that there is a lot that still needs to be done in order to achieve our dreams. All in all, the future seems to be bright. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable May. Honorable Carlon. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Um, allow me to make uh, four brief comments, but before I do, 
Let me first start by congratulating you for your leadership in condoling with the families who lost their lives at the, in the Lake Victoria. I hope that the families find grace in this difficult time. Uh, secondly, right when I go speak, I would like, because I did not have the opportunity yesterday, to welcome our youngest member of the house, our CS from Kenya. I think he will take over the title of the youngest member from me. Uh, <laughs> uh, thirdly, we should also thank the house uh, and the speaker for allowing me to represent them at ECOS. I believe I'll be making my submissions on that at a later date. Uh, now, finally, I want to support the report of the committee on general purpose. Uh, for so the main reason is knowing that I have worked with the chair and is very thorough. And the one thing the report does is capture the displeasure with which we have been forced to um, debate this, this uh, uh, report. Uh, for I would in fact like clarification uh, from the council on what challenges they may be facing that require us to be debating uh, a report for the year, uh, I think, 2014-2015. I think I believe I'm even still doing my bar exam. Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that uh, we have to do this, but because the House is a house of rule, uh, I have no choice. I'm only encouraged by the fact that I have seen in the comments that we have assurance from the SG that uh, the 2016-2017 report um, will be coming to us soon. I want to urge the council to ensure that these reports come to us in a timely manner so that we're able to assist you know, our citizens of this great uh, region. I had personal difficulty in reading the report because it was in the past, it spoke of things in the future. So I could not ascertain these things in the future in which report will they be. So I could not even inter interrogate whether they have been implemented. So with those few remarks, I want to support the, this report with the amendments suggested by Honorable John Claude, so that we do not find ourselves debating obsolete um, reports again. Thank you, Vice Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Fellows. I see our, our assembly is trying to go IT. So one thing I needed so urgently is how I can alert the class when I need it. Because we, I really struggle to let you know that I needed to talk to you. Honorable George. Um, right Honorable Speaker, First of all, this morning I woke up to news that uh, we may not be seeing two of our colleagues who are part of this other house. And I'm really sad that I have lost our very close friend, Dr. Colinda, who, um, according to the news, has been replaced by the Minister of the East African Community. But I've also been saddened this afternoon to learn that also our own minister from the Republic of South Sudan is not going to be part of us. It's a normal part of but you know, we miss them. We really miss them. Don't you miss them? That <laughs> <Right laughs> <on> speaker. <clears throat> I have no option but to, you know, the height of the problem here you now. Right now, Speaker, I have no option but to support this report. Because, like my colleagues have said, we really are going to dispense of this report. First of all, it's on record that this report was rejected by the third assembly. So you know how it is difficult to deal with uh, the rejects. 
So sometimes you just try to polish it and make sure that it's uh, it's, it's consumable. So we are trying to redeem this report so that it can become fit for our consumption. And indeed, uh, like Honorable Musoka said, I'm encouraged by the fact that the Secretary General, while appearing before our committee, gave us the assurance that the subsequent reports are going to be more refined, they're going to be well done, and uh, therefore they will reflect um, the true image of our community. So, Speaker, when you read this report, and I really want to, to speak broadly on some of the principles of this report, I'm just going into the, the content, because some of the issues, the content, has been overtaken by them. And um, I also would like to support the Honorable Namara when he says that we need to have an only that consideration of this report. You see, a report, though it's uh, a standalone, because it's time, it's time, uh, time specific, it will inform subsequent planning. And you cannot do this in isolation, especially if it's a report of 2014, and now we are in 2018. For you to be able to give it resonance, you must be able to draw a connection between 2014, 2015, 2015, 2015, 2015, 2017, 2017, 2018. I think some of you have been saying before, how many staff you still have. But that's our situation. So I would think that we need, as a committee, and as this house, to recommend that the subsequent reports should be broken as an omnibus, so that we consider them as one package. During that time, we are going to be able to draw a nexus between one report and the other to be able to project where the community is going. Some of the issues that you raised here are fundamental questions that we also raised in that um, during our committee. And indeed, um, sometimes it's difficult to talk about the substance of this report. Because now, you could be, let's just perform the ritual of passing this report. I'm going to show you and then later as well um, look at the other reports that stand to show you how to use the noise now, gate. <clears throat> The structure, the content, the context of this report were some of the areas that this committee looked at critically. So that, you know, the, 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 the Secretary General, when he came to, 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 to when he appeared before us, he gave us um, hope because now we have um, a very specific that is dealing with report writing. And I think it is after realizing that the, the, the reports that have been generated were not passing the test. And that speaks to where we are coming from as a community. I think over the years, let's say fast, that it seems like we failed on certain policy standards. And it is now the responsibility of this assembly to begin to report the secretariat and the community to take this as a very thing, not just as a reason. We are not writing this report because if you look at it, it's like we are being stampeded into writing this report. And I understand from one of our members that this report needs to be written for donors. Excuse me, are we writing this report for donors? These reports are being written for this purpose. And that's the point we are making here. It's not just donor driven reports. I even mind if you're writing a separate report for the donor, but you bring us the report for this purpose. Because that's the one that this house would want to consider. The one for donors, you can go to a donor conference and have a specific report for the donor. But the work for the East Africans to bring it to this house and we'll consider it as a report of the community. 
Now, <clears throat> going forward, I recommend that the subsequent reports should have a clear purpose. I remember when we were in that house, there was an allegation, and we captured it in our first report, that this report has already been consumed by partner state. Then we are told, no, this report has not been shared. My question therefore is, if this report has not been shared, what informs other subsequent plans? Because what we're facing with the report, if you have not shared this report, therefore you're saying it is not an authentic report. What then informs the other planning project? For the subsequent years. So technically, this report was not shared, but implicitly, this report is being used. So going forward, we need to have a statement, and I think our committee is very dedicated to coming out with a proper statement, so that we can support the team that has been put in place by the Secretariat to come up with a very, very Good document. I am encouraged by the fact that the Secretary General has given us that assurance. And indeed, he says he has only been here for three years. So he can only be responsible for the other subsequent uh, reports. Our hope then is that the report of 2015 2016, the report of 2015 2017, the report of 2017 2018, meet the standard and that it's a report that we are proud to show and it should you know it could it could fit all the boxes indicating where our strategic plan is where we want to take this community we should be just do business as usual we want to be the future of this community in that report and see all the calls that we need to plan the speaker I'd like to support the report and uh, the document. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I have three slots remaining on this item. Honorable uh, Lund, Honorable Francois, Dr. Matame, Simon, uh, Dr. Agape, but let's be brief now. And by the way, remember I have this. Uh, Button and that I can press. So let's try to do this so that we can proceed on the next item. Yes, in that order. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, to give me the opportunity. Honorable Speaker, I'm a member of GP and we have looked at this report in detail. We have discussed it with the council and the LG. I have no much to add than other criticism and whatever they are proposing. I always stand to support just to get this on the record because it has been here left behind by our last third uh, era. We will have his food. So we have no other idea to do what we are supposed to do and just support it so that it goes on the record. And then we can move forward. I would say that when the speaker, this report was taken back uh, by the previous assembly just because of the substandard of reporting. And what we have been corrected and brought is now much better than what was originally in the report. We expect that this to be done a little bit better, although people are told there are some improvements. So, Mr. Honorable Speaker, we are an institution which has a target and which has a mission to accomplish. And it's a process that we are moving on. And in that process, the report is supposed to be a measure to see how far we have gone, where we have erred, and what are the obstacles that we are not moving as fast or achieving our target as required. 
Well, this morning, when the police report, when they were speaking, there are lots of protocols. There are lots of safety and what is that uh, solutions. A lot of these, which have been passed by this house, which has not been signed by a certain number of uh, partner states. We are not being told in this report, this report is not signed. And as I went back to 2012, 2010, 2012, and when we are just checked, we are there. And then we are not told why these reports are not been signed or why this particular security has not been signed. These have not been signed. To look at committee on accounts, you can go to page 11 because this data may have kind of history to carry for a set of EAC as organ, but also as institutions and year, of course. Legal rules and privilege, page 9, where you find some access to this one for actual facts we are dealing with. Committee on Communication, Trade and Investment, you can look at page 52, where you can find some elements to enrich your actual research. Committee on Agriculture, Tourism and Natural Resources, I think Honorable Chair and Dr. Samba has already stated about that page 25, and it's good. I thank, I thank you, Honorable Dr. Samba, for your input. Committee on Region Affairs and Conflict Resolution, Page 48, you can go there, and our committee, the no purpose, look at page 34, and you will overload the report, you have to look at all of those even access for, for other committees. Meaning that the work was not only to appreciate the recommendations from the previous third assembly, but the recommendation will also to look at the content, if I book to look at the and so on. And then, as I'm still on the floor, on this point, I appreciate the Council Minister and the Secretariat for the effort. After they received the recommendation from the third area, they have started to, to improve the report, as you can see it. And it was already stated by the Honorable Mariam Kuti, being known as a member of the former committee, the Department Committee for the last five years. 
I'm also a witness for this improvement. And allow me to present the commitment we have within the council, the Secretariat, and the Security Committee. First of all, we were very humble to see the way the council ministers and the the SD signed the, the report immediately. Also, they, they were told that the report was not signed. It's for you. Yeah. But, and then the commitment with 60 months of commitment to, to avail a report. This means that not to take a report one, the following year, the report will be available. That was because this is the only report. And I think the only report is because together with the financial budget of the this year. So the following year, in the third one, the report will be available. And we will have an eye on that. Even if you are supported by the now, the report will be very lucky to even if it's not our service because the way it is, we are attending a debating a report that so yes. And then, we are talking about the community of 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 the but the report of 2015 and 2016 was also addressed to all members of the committee that were part in Nairobi last time. We didn't have time to look at it. So we can understand that if we were also to do with that, the report 2015 and 2017 is now in the office of the SD, being looking at it, ready to be sent to the Council of Ministers, this is a tremendous report we have to appreciate. But also knowing that we are getting that not a very hard as a member of the Metropolitan Committee, and I encourage all members to look at the report when they are available to help us understand the terms of the demand. As I'm ending up, we are happy to receive a hard copy of EAC strategic plan. And I request that a soft copy of that strategic plan for EAC be available to all members through the joint committee because it can help. And it is on that basis that we are focusing and building all our activities and improvements for the welfare of the people of the community of East Africa. I submit and I support that vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I've been very pleased because uh, a lot has been said about the report. And uh, my part is to uh, thank uh, the committee uh, for trying to come up with a report where there was no report. And uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the, in this report, when you look at the report, there's a lot of uh, inconsistency and uh, blood uh, facts that are taken. So, and uh, I would look that to indefinite uh, failure on uh, the secretary. And uh, that is why, uh, basically, when the report was brought before the, the, the parliament, that is why it was rejected. Mr. Speaker, uh, the committee has done a lot of work uh, uh, trying to improve uh, this report. We have actually tried to dig into the skeleton and get some meat out of it, of which I believe they have done. Mr. Speaker, what I believe is that the more a report stays, the more facts are hidden, Mr. Speaker. So, in future, uh, it will be good and proper for uh, the people who are responsible to bring the report in time so that. Uh, uh, we as members can do the work that we are supposed to do uh, and not 
be considered as a rubber stamp like we are. Because now we are doing our work that we don't really know uh, uh, how we, we are passing actually a report with a lot of inconsistencies. But because rules are rules, we have to follow the rules and we have to pass the report. So, Mr. Speaker, one question that I was asking myself as I was going through the report is in case there's a problem in this report, how do we cushion ourselves as members of parliament? How do we cushion ourselves in passing a report which uh, we don't really have a fact, material fact on it, Mr. Speaker? So mine is to insist that there should be strict adherence of Article uh, 14. So, in future, we will continue passing the uh, report and doing our legislative work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I must declare that before I proceed, that I am a member of the General Purpose Committee, and at the outset, I'm standing to support the, the report submitted by the chairperson of the General Purpose Committee as a member, and uh, my fellow members of the committee will be witness that uh, we did deliberate the report extensively, and uh, at the end, we were we entered into an agreement with the with the council and the Secretary General that in future, you know, yet it's a, in the past it used to be business as usual as the lady they could be made. And uh, it's evident it's not only in this assembly, it was even in the previous assembly. When they rejected this one for 2014 it was in 2017. It was in arrears as well. So what we agreed is that uh, the Secretariat is going to establish some mechanism that would ensure that the report will be submitted on time. And to that effect, uh, the, the chairperson of the council undertook to supervise that that one is implemented. So with that, uh, we, we were very comfortable. The only thing which is remaining, and uh, it will come back again to this house, is that uh, there are the, the other pending reports. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to beg the indulgence of yourself, Mr. Speaker, and the house, that uh, to bear with us now, because uh, actually we are taking that scan, not because we did that job, but to clear so that we start with the 2017-18 report, the one which we were in the house, and look at it thoroughly and proceed on. But for these other ones, because they, are, they, they, they were pending, and actually we notified the council that it is a violation of Article 49, 2C, and Article 59. Because all of the both articles talk about submission of reports annually, and not in areas. So, uh, we, we went, we, we concurred that, hey, that one, is, let's, let's, we leave the past to where it belongs, the Bibles be bygones, we clear the report, and we move forward. So, Mr. Speaker, from the, what I can say is, uh, from the discussions we had as a committee, with the council and the Secretary General, we arrived at a promising conclusion that the future is going to be bright. I submit Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Dr. Gabriel, then Honorable Fatuma, and we will close. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ryan, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, on the one side, let me first and foremost uh, convey my condolences to the victims and their families. Uh, from the tragedy of the fair that occurred on the Lake Victoria on 20th uh, this month. Second, let me also welcome our new member, Honorable Aiden Muhammad Karibu. Now, on this issue, right, Honorable Speaker, 
on this report, if you look at all the issues or the problems we are talking about, or if what we have been talking about, is something is there that everyone or each one of us that works for the community, whether for the institution, whether for the organ, does things in his or her own way. There's no seriousness. We don't take our responsibilities, either individually or collectively, seriously. We don't. Now, if it, if I can demonstrate my, my point by even the summary report, this report. If you look at page two, that was written by uh, the general council. They have done good work. Let me comment on that. They have done good work. But if you look, whoever wrote this report, just to show that we are not serious. On page two, the first, if you look, the way they, they, they title, the first version of the ESC annual report. It is that day, and that first is capitalized. And then you come with a version, is it's a more letter. And then you go again, and your there is capitalized. The report is capitalized. And it is all, all of it. This shows that there's something wrong with the time, with the, you know, whatever we do, we don't really care what we do. This is not supposed to be the way to be. This is a regional assembly. And the quality of our work must be clean. It has to be really reflective of the regional assembly. I'm just saying like that. Now, I suggest to this, right, honorable speaker and honorable members, if for us, if we want something good, let's do this. <coughs> let's all the members, if that is possible, with time and resources, we should come in the future, meet together in one place, and talk sense to ourselves. What is it that each one of us that works for ESC is here for? So that we can really be strong and see what is it each one of us can do. What is it that we can do collectively as a group, as members of the community, as to so that we can work you know, efficiently and effectively for the members of the entire community. This is what I think can help us in the future and today. Because we can talk day in, day out, week in, week out, week out but again, if we are not sitting together and talk, you know, to ourselves to make sense so that each one of us can say, okay, we have to begin seriousness today. Nothing can happen. But it's still I'm optimistic that in the future, given the work we have done and the engagement we have had, you know, things can happen or things can be better. But we still need to sit together, work together, and put it strong together and define a strategic way for work collectively. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, Honorable Hatimus, please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, allowing me the opportunity to speak in this new uh, session. Honorable Speaker, first and foremost, I want to send my condolences to the people of Tanzania. I didn't have the opportunity to do it yesterday, and I think to take the time to send my condolences to the people of of the people of a very traumatizing for them, very painful moment for them, and very difficult moment for both the country and the citizens and the families affected. Honorable Speaker, my second comment is to congratulate uh, uh, new CS, is a new member of IALA. I don't think he's a baby, but he's a new member. <laughs> Of Rana to join us, and um, so this statement which was quite easy. Honorable Speaker, I want to support the report of the Gender Focus Committee in uh, providing some basic support in terms of uh, the report we have. One, I, uh, and I am saying very basic, what is a very it's not very elaborate, but um, it's providing some um, direction on the, on the annual report for 2014-2015. And the it's a bit challenging. It's a typical community, and its institutions are not very many. They are few. They are not uh, very elaborate, but it's a national uh, country where it has series of uh, institutions to report on its international disease. And so I'm, I'm very disturbed, and I think if it is a culture or uh, it's a community, I think uh, it will uh, 
we can uh, improve the best culture of uh, providing. Uh, so far, Kabuki is um, almost four years or five years behind uh, in terms of, uh, of looking at current status of the uh, annual uh, uh, assessment of accessibility. I wonder if it's a 2014, 2022 report is an old report. Sometimes when I was reading, I was asking myself, um, and it doesn't have analysis of to compare what has been achieved and what has not been achieved. Clearly, the committee, I think the committee has done great work struggling to get a report which I think was, uh, was not uh, very comprehensive and didn't have proper data. One of the speakers, the secretariat of this particular community who are mandated to produce reports have a capacity. I have no doubt. But I'm asking what is the problem in terms of providing a quality report that uh, meets uh, high standard that is required in terms of this, this report, if you look at it, it only gives uh, statements without giving uh, quantitative uh, figures. One of the speakers, I don't know whether it's the design of uh, the reporting or it's a little bit smart as to report uh, statements and others. And when I look at this report, I don't know whether it's uh, the community was born in 2014, 2022. It's only use of mechanisms, operations of mechanisms, formulation of mechanisms, development of manual, manual development of uh, an operational life, and creating awareness of those uh, mechanisms and uh, you know uh, frameworks. On the computer, it runs across the report. And you ask yourself, is this and you, somebody who doesn't understand or has not interacted with the international community? You will get an impression and see that this is a new institution setting up uh, infrastructure, setting up uh, institution, and setting up frameworks uh, and money. So you will not get substantive information to understand. I was looking at the agenda part of uh, this report. And one of the speakers in the report to you, it talks of workshops, it talks of one day workshops, attending women international forum. International Women's Day, you know, and that is basically wonderful. And I was asking myself, is this only thing the, the community has done 2015, 2014 to, in terms of gender development and uh, and uh, ensuring that women and uh, advancement is enhanced? I, I don't think we're attending one half day International Women's Day. They will enhance women's um, programs and activities. So I'm looking for what they have done about gender issues. We just launched the gender, gender policy. So there is a new development. That's why I'm saying they are only developing. There is no substantive and elaborate work on delivering some of these things. And I was looking at how much money was allocated for gender issues. And I cannot see. So you cannot even say that little money has been allocated and more money has been allocated. On the board speaker, I think uh, it's difficult to discuss, but again, we have a lot of questions in our mind of how much money has been allocated to youth. Even the youth, there is only one conference in the whole year. And that's not a serious achievement on the board speaker. Even the uh, civil society at the community level can do work there. And sensitization. And the honorable speaker, I think, um, in the next report, it's in, I think it's in the type of report of 2017 and 2018, or 2016 17, so that we understand it better. These systems are they working? Are they still systems being developed? Mechanisms and money. Honorable speaker, I want to end it. There, and I want to see in the next report, and the minister is here as a chair, that substantive work for men and women of this country in terms of gender development, in the promotion of rights for persons with disabilities, uh, the how 
women and men as themselves, that is properly. And the one is I think you need to see, and how much women have been affected, and how many have been utilized, what are the pending ones, what are the challenges in terms of breaking those uh, uh, special categories, and all that. And the one is that other issue is as a factor, as our chair says. If you look at the forward statement, it says, as a pressure being the main state of this Africa economy, especially on food, food security, experience like this. But when you look at the budget, that statement, which is very cardinal to this report, and very crucial in terms of the central economy of this, and uh, as a pressure being the central to this economy, resources uh, that are to this is not uh, at par. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I, I, I have to be proposed amendment which says the ideal, the ideal time frame for tabling the ESC annual report is within seven months after the financial year review. So, uh, so, so, so I think it is uh, the, maybe the, 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 the report, the report uh, did not capture specific wording, but I think the whole idea of agreement between us and council was that this report be tabled six months upon approval of the uh, Uh, it is uh, the, the, the particular, the particular, uh, because if it is a yeah. yeah. what prevents it from coming one year later? I found the that the header of a speaker, if the house does so feel that uh, the limit to within six months, it is okay, I have no problem. But I would be a bit hesitant to move it to seven months. I don't think there is any reason. Or maybe you can have a one with council. Yeah. Is it okay if it is moving? Okay. okay. I think council will respond to that. I personally have no objection, but I would like to limit it to six months. Even if we are to change the one, it must remain within six months uh, of the time. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I don't think I should say much more. I agree with the Honorable Members. The same agitation they felt on the time lateness of this report is exactly what uh, the committee felt. Mm -hmm. Is it all the water? Yes. Uh, yeah, my concern is that uh, when we we'll go to this matter, the council is the time to so this, uh, this process because it's not in the process. And uh, if the way the chairman has put it that that was right about to say that then we pass because these are the solutions. We must know as a house what's the solution we are passing. Yeah, so because the issue is done about either way or either way, this way or that way. So can we be clear about this matter? Uh, 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 it is more of a point of procedure than it is a point of order. So, only about the Kadir, you have to pronounce yourself on this. Is it at least six months or, at, or within? Yeah. My honorable speaker will be uh, as a matter of fact, um, the the uh, council are informed of this result. The report will be available in the February of the year after immediately after the financial year. Yes, that's for now we're talking about February next year that we will receive the report for the immediate uh, financial So that sounds very much like yes. we did. Yes, it is within, within six months. And that's why I want to, to, to keep the word, I mean the number of six months because that was very, very clear. The difference to why we So within six months is the, uh, is the right word to use. So right honorable speaker, I really want to thank the honorable members very much. This was a report that was deliberated upon by previous parliament, and in fact, on the hands of the court, uh, the right honorable speaker, the member of the house, have also pronounced himself to this report in the past parliament as well. So really, I appreciate your, your, your understanding that we passed this report. The committee is already handling the uh, 2016 report before us already, and we are dealing with it now. And, uh, uh, we are also from the other report in some way. Really, I would also like to accommodate the idea that we bring them uh, uh, on the bus, but we do not have all the other reports. We have the So we have only one other report which is tabled before the commission, which I believe, uh, upon the finishing of our deliberation in the next session of, of, of this assembly, we will be uh, tabling that report as well. With those few uh, remarks, Honorable Chair, I thank you and I thank you. The Honorable Members, and I ask them to adopt this report. Thank you very much, the Honorable Chair, General Papas Committee. Now I call uh, upon the Council Chair to report to reply. Thank you very much.
operationalize the, the, uh, the law that we passed here on the maritime transport in 2008 that was fully inspirational. And we have been able to secure some funding from the African Development Bank, which is a multinational funding, the project. And now, what is going on is that we have identified the bottleneck within the uh, within the lake and around the lake. And this money, the funding is going to help us to put around 22 search and rescue operation centers, which might be established. And also, it will help us to have the coordination uh, system that will help to rescue our people in case of any problem around the lake. So the process is on. Uh, it's just that unfortunate that it comes when we have lost our people in the tragedy which occurred in Tanzania, as of the same, but I believe this is on and the thing that this is a multinational funding to be able to deliver the results in time. There's also a question on the question of the budget. Yeah, this one has been there, but they also comes with the the late remitting from the, the funds to the community, especially from the partnership. And also, this meeting has been, been occasioned by other stakeholders who have not been able to uh, support the agenda of the African community in time. So, Mr. Speaker, I just want again want to thank you for the session. I want to thank the members and pray that uh, these reports be adopted so that it now becomes a public report. So that for now, they are still, still the report of the House. Until after it has been adopted by the House, it cannot be a public report. And that's what I just want to say to the member. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, Honorable Members, um, the motion on the floor is that the East African Community Annual Report of Activities for the period 2014-2015 be adopted. May those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The next item I want to thank you for the advice you have given. The, the way you have debated this report. One of the members, uh, and I think the council for the committee meeting they have made, these reports are statutory. They, they, are, they are statutory. So there is no way we can treat them as if they were optional. And when it is annual, it is supposed to be annual. Even the idea of omnibus may not work. We can treat several annual reports at the same time, but not one aggregated report of several annual reports. Because the Twitter says we must have annual reports. And these reports are generated by ourselves, institutions, and organs of the community. The Secretariat is supposed to give leadership when the report and the information comes from other institutions. So in my view, it should not be a serious task. Maybe just sourcing or outsourcing a technical input that you need so that you come up with a good product. And technical inputs like pictures, and having it in a user-friendly way, and how to capture the most important information, but it shouldn't be difficult. And there is a reason why the Twitter decided that this report comes to the house. It's because we have oversight function. See, we're not just being informed on what was done, but we can use the report to plan for our future oversight activities. If we are told, there is now an arrangement on video conference. We can create an activity to know how much it is being utilized and how much it is cost saving and to what extent can it be reflected in the future budgeting. So we have so much to do with these reports, and this is the reason why we should have them in time. So I hope and I believe the commitments done by the council are going to be to improve the situation in the future. Thank you. Item number four in the order paper, the East African Community Custom Management Amendment number two, Bill 2018, for 
second reading by way of motion. Chairperson, Council of Ministers. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move a motion that the East African Community Customs Management Bill, as amended number two, 2018, be ready for the second time. Uh, second us. For Honorable Ambassador Fatuma and Daniela and uh, Honorable CTC. Uh, Chairperson, Council of Ministers, justify and proceed with the motion. Justify. Mr. Speaker, the objective of this bill is to amend section 24.1 of the East African Community Customs Management Act to require a master or agent of a vessel to provide to the proper officer advanced information relating to the goods carried by the vessel before departure from the last port of call. The bill is intended to provide for the customs administration to receive advance information regarding the goods being moved across national borders ahead of the arrival of the vessel carrying the goods. The bill also seeks to facilitate the ability of the customs administration to detect high risk consignments ahead of the arrival of the vessel carrying the goods to enable the customs administration to take appropriate action on such consignments and distinguish between risk, high risk goods from those that are not high risk. So speaker, a bit. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, now I call upon the chairperson of the committee of CTI to present the report of the committee.
that the current section 24.1, subsection A of the East Africa Community Customs Management Act 2004, requires the shipping line to submit the vessel management not less than 24 hours before arrival of the vessel from a foreign port. This means that information relating to the cargo being carried by the vessel is submitted long after the vessel has left the last port of port. The 24 hour minimum period is not adequate to sustain effective risk profiling of cargo prior to arrival of the vessel. Two, it was also noted that the mandate of the customs administration in the EU department states is to facilitate trade and ensure security of the international trade supply chain. To effectively carry out this mandate, the customs administration requires advanced information regarding the goods moved across the national borders ahead of the arrival of the carrier vessel. Three, it was also further noted that international trade supply chain is susceptible to criminal exploitation and cheating trade. To effectively mitigate the security risk and at the same time facilitate seamless clearance of goods, the customs administration needs to be furnished with the information relating to the cargo which is being carried by the vessel. Since the enactment of the UK Customs Management Act in 2004, the Council of Ministers has, on more than eight times, presented to the House amendments to the Principal Act. However, all these have been piecemeal and selective amendments. It should be noted that since 2004, a lot of development changes have taken place in the trade and investment sector, which need to be addressed by this Act. It is important to note that the EAC legislative framework should be responsive to the needs of the people, principles, and the objectives of the people. As a community, we shall not be able to realize that people centered and private sector driven integration process is, among others, the concerns and challenges of the business community and not just. We therefore have a few recommendations on the future. We recommend that the Council of Ministers carry out a comprehensive review of the East African Community Management Act 2004 to address the current challenges in the trade and investment sector. Two, the Council of Ministers introduces to the Assembly a comprehensive EAC Customs Amendment Bill that addresses the challenges identified in one of our independent years 2019-2020. And lastly, on this speaker, the Assembly before I request the committee to assembly to adopt the report of the committee and pass it to each African community section, medicine and management number two bill twenty eighteen. Right on the speaker sir, I guess you Thank you very much, Honorable Chair CTF. The honorable members, uh, the motion on the floor is that the East African Community Customs Management Amendment number two bill. 2018 be read for the second time. And I'll put to the question that the East African community. Um, I repeat, the motion on the floor is that the East African community custom management amendment number 2B 2018 be read for the second time. The debate is open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a very important uh, amendment to the Custom Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It has the aspect of protecting our people against uh, counterfeit. It has the aspect of protecting our people against dumping. It has, uh, because it has also the aspect of protecting our people against counterfeit and other uh, goods which come to our borders, within our borders, and uh, they are meant to dispose of those goods which are actually dangerous in nature from the mother country 
Dieu pour les causes. Quand la boutique a deux de sa vie de Ahmed, non Il peut gagner des films, 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 des And there were delays as they tried to control the customers and at times it led to so much delay that the port was becoming overcrowded. Actually, we found, particularly in the port of that, that the services were that they were very efficient. But the delays and the waiting for such issues brought the crowdness in the port. So many con containers which remained in the port were not cleared or removed because of such issues. So this amendment will clear the inadequate information which would make this service smooth. On the speaker, I also want to say that time frame is of essence in any transaction. And particularly in this case, where goods are being shipped by air, by sea, or even by road. And once such information is provided, we cannot have cases where goods expire, like it is assumed in many situations. We lack consumer protection because sometimes the officers do not give the information that these goods have expired during this handling time. And as a result, the goods are cleared, they are delivered, the consumer consume the goods, and at times it poses the risk or it comes with a lot of health hazards. One of the speaker finally, relevant stakeholders. Because when we visited the central corridor, we found these stakeholders have a bill. So it might be clear what's that the stakeholders, the relevant stakeholders were consulted widely and their views were considered in this deal. With those two remarks, I just support. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to start and they precise and on the point report uh, with regard to this bill. And at the same time also thank the Council of Ministers because this is a bill from our Council. That's our speaker, I have a few issues with this bill.